Hello everyone, it's Rick, it's Monday, March 6th, 2017, and if you want to reach me, you can reach me at rick0327 at me.com, and I always get people in the comments section, Rick, how do I get in touch with you? I just told you, Rick0327 at me.com. Got to pay attention to the details, people. You're dealing with uh, people that have figured out a scheme to steal your money for child support. And if you don't pay attention, they're going to keep getting you, even with all the tools. So I'm just talking about the people like, Rick, how do I get in contact with you when I just told you? Anyway, what we have here is I've created an affidavit, uh, a notice Request judicial intervention for restoration of driving privileges. Take judicial notice of the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. There's a, uh, a West Virginia case of Stinney v. Holcomb. You got a writ of mandamus and a writ of prohibition. The writ of mandamus is the court telling your State Department of Motor Vehicles that they have to... Uh, abide by the Constitution, uh, and then a writ of prohibition is prohibiting them from for suspending your license. See, the uh, United States Constitution has recognized that driving is a privilege and it's essential to work. People recognize that you need to drive to and from work. And these scumbags and child support, these you know uneducated morons, who have no compassion will think nothing of sending uh, notification to the Department of Motor Vehicles and, and the idiots in the Department of Motor Vehicle because they all work together. They they're all work for the state. So they're all part of the, 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 this criminal conspiracy to cooperate with each other. Because remember, who ultimately benefits from all of this is the state that you live in or the state that's collecting the child support. So all the heads of all the departments, they all cooperate with each other because it's all about making money for the state. They don't give a shit about you or me. They do not care. They do not care if they put you in the, in the poorhouse. They do not care. And what they do is uh, they suspend your license. Then you got to go down and, and you have to sign a piece. Of, then I, I caught them. People send me paperwork. This is how slick these people are. Not only are they having you sign uh, pay the money, but they, they, they'll sneak in there sometimes that you're guilty, that you've you got to pay child support because you're so desperate to get your, child, um, your driver's license back, you'll sign anything. These rotten bastards. So, you know, it's, it's extortion, and the courts recognize it. So I put this together, uh, and you're going to file it in uh, your state, uh, not the family court, the, like your, your, your state's version of a Supreme Court whichever that one is. In New York State, we have a Supreme Court. <clears throat> and they have these things called uh, RADI, request, uh, request, uh, whatever, it's a request for judicial intervention. And you're requesting for the courts to inter intervene on your behalf. And unfortunately, you're going to have to pay money for this, not unless you're broke. If you're broke, you, bring, you can uh, request a uh, former pauper, pauperous, which is, uh, you know, you're, you're uh, in, in poverty. And that's your reason why you can't lose your driver's license as well. The, the courts recognize that uh, if, you, if you're in poverty, doesn't mean that, and this goes for, uh, in the courts, I mean, in the, yeah, in the courts. Like, you can't be jailed for being poor. It's discrimination. So, so being that they can't jail you for being poor, they can't suspend your driver's license as well. And I have, I put the Department of Justice memo with the paperwork, you know, for people who donate. This is what you get here. This is, I've, I've added a lot of stuff. This is what you get. Okay. I got a lot of uh, affidavits, um, Department of Justice memo, uh, dismissal or discharge. Somebody's, I think, being a wise guy with me. Listen. Anything that gets you to stop paying child support, that's all you care about. Dismissal, vacate, 
anything. Okay? They don't care about words. They care about facts. That's why, you know, a lot of you guys are, in, and this is great. This happened to me. That's why I, in my video I said, you're not going to fight a global conspiracy with the old capital name and all that stuff. Don't get caught up in all that stuff. Just stick to the facts. I figured out a simple way to get at these people. If the, if the support orders are, uh, were created without following their own procedures, like Amin Osiris says, Amin Osiris, is that he's a big proponent of. They don't follow their own procedures. So if they don't follow their own procedures, that's how you get at them. Okay? He knows what he's talking about. That's why I learned from a lot of stuff. So I took his lead and... You know, I took my police background because I told you guys, you get a DWI, what, the first thing a lawyer is going to try and do is, you know, show to the court that the, uh, the search, the, um, the application of the, uh, sober, the sober sobriety test was not given the right way. And what the courts do is they throw the case out. It's the same thing with child support. If the support order is void, guess what? They, they effed up. And guess what? They got to give you everything back. That's why it's so difficult for them to cooperate. They don't make things easy. Because uh, remember I told you, you got to rebut all the presumptions. But when you try to rebut them, they put all these roadblocks up. You know, you go to the court, the people don't. We can't, I can't give you legal advice, stuff like that. I'm not asking you for legal advice. I'm asking you for my directions. Where do I file this paperwork? Stuff like that. That's why I, I, with certain things, I tell you to do it by the mail. Because these people are so friggin' vicious. Um, yeah, so um, I have everything. What I did was um, the writ of quo warranto, I changed it. And you could do it. Anybody who has it already, you haven't used it. Remember, I, I'm using it as a way to get at the judge to say, listen, I need to see your authority to just dismiss my paperwork without telling me why. See, when they issue a dismissal, the way it's supposed to operate, or when they grant, you know, say they grant the support order, they're supposed to just give the reasons why. Remember I told you the judges only have power based on the evidence before them. Okay, so if they don't have any evidence, they have no power. And it's the same thing with their orders. So if they issue an order, and it's just because they say so, because that's, that's their famous jurisdiction, because I say so jurisdiction, it's void. Because it has to cite the evidence that was introduced. Now, many of you go, it happened to me, many of us go to these support hearings where the, uh, you know, the, the, the mother of your children stands there, they have an attorney usually, and they don't have to say two words, they don't have to introduce any evidence, and this kangaroo court fake judge issues an order. Well, guess what? It's void. If it doesn't have any evidence, it's void. It's called arbitrary and capricious. Meaning it's arbitrary. It's just based on an opinion. Judges are not supposed to have... If they have any opinions, judges, it's supposed to be based on evidence. Okay? So what I did was... I took the writ of quo warranto. It's still there, see? But what I did was I made it into an objection. Because a lot of people are getting the... Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll dismiss it, at the judges. So now what we're going to do is, okay, now I'm going to file an objection, and you're going to demand clarification of evidence. Then you're going to notice the demand of writ of quo rento under the Ninth Amendment. Uh, here's, another, here's another trick that they're, they're doing. They did it to one guy. They'll say, oh, well, uh, like 28 USC right here. That's a, a United States code. State courts are supposed to recognize federal laws as well. It's, it's just... The judges are always trying to trick us up. That's why my paperwork is always long and, and, and contains a lot of stuff because I am eliminating doubt. That way we, you don't spend a year going back and forth with a judge. I address everything because I've been through it. That's, how I'm, that's why I'm doing this stuff. Everything that I'm doing for you guys is based on my experience in the courts for four years and the reason why I know so much. That's why I can give you information. I've been through all this stuff. I've actually been to court. I won. Had my support order vacated. Okay? And all the tricks that they pulled on me based on my paperwork tells me my paperwork is sound. And people are getting responses. 
okay? Let me show you here. All right, so right here, you see all this information real fast. This is what you're gonna get when you donate, guys, all this information. That's a lot of stuff, all right? This is all study material, PDFs that I found. I put in there um, the essentials for attorneys. This, this is the, all the, uh, the laws and the procedures that the child support attorneys, uh, you know who's the child support attorney? Is the judge sitting there, act, I mean the fake judge sitting there, or the judge representing you know, your baby's mama, you know, whatever. They're supposed to follow the procedures, and nine times, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they don't. And I put it in there, and I, and I put in there um, the glossary of terms. Everything that's there is going to make you smarter about the child support system. I, I'm educating you. Besides giving you a weapon, and all I'm doing here is I'm putting you in a position to win. You understand? We're dealing with criminals. I'm telling you. It was not easy for me. I had, I, they turned down most of my paperwork, and I just would never give up. And as I kept going, I got better and better and better. And finally, I hit on the right thing, the right nerve, and that was it. They all fell. Okay, all the trees fell down. It was that Rita Quarento. Okay? So, one of the guys, remember I'm telling you how important it is that you send out the notice to the clerk right away. Okay, I think my instructions are pretty simple. I mean, some people are getting them right away and they're still confused. I have them in order. Okay, as soon as you get it, the first thing you're doing is, you. oh, by the way, the notice to the clerk, send a $10 money order, okay? Because these douchebags, they want to charge you 60 cents for every page or whatever, which they're not really supposed to do, but they do it anyway. In New York State, we don't got to pay for it because it's a judicial law here. But in other states, they're asking for money. Okay, so I, I, I added that to the instructions. Okay, you're going to uh, give a self-addressed envelope with your address uh, and a $10 money order. Because you, what you're doing is you're, you're wasting time when they send you, they respond to you, and they're like, okay, but you, you got to give us money now. And this takes away time. That's two or three weeks of lost time. So what we're doing is we want to send it out to the clerk, one guy here, okay? Hey, Rick. I got a response from the clerk's office confirming no money judgments on file. That's key, okay? If there's no money judgments on file, that means you don't owe any money. And that's another example of due process not being followed. They have to enter the orders. But because it's a fraud, they never do because everybody's cooperating with each other, okay? So that's important. Now he has that piece of evidence now. Now he could take that and send it to his employer and say, oh, by the way, remember when I told you the IWO is a fraud? Here's more evidence that I don't owe any money. And it makes it harder for the employer to keep pushing back. I don't know why they're pushing so hard. But they, uh, it, it, it's unbelievable. I, I'm thinking they are being compensated. I think they're getting paid. I haven't been able to find it yet. Uh, one subscriber in Tennessee pointed some information to me. I didn't get around to reading all of it yet, but if I can find it, oh my God. See, when they're cooperating with each other to deprive you of your property, that's called conspiracy. It's not cooperating, it's conspiracy. They're conspiring to take your property because what they're doing is they're laying the guilt trip on your employer. Oh, you know, uh, the Families that receive regular payments do not have to go on welfare, blah, blah. And they're doing the old guilt trip like it's your employer's duty to feed your children. It's not. It's your property. It's just another scam because the state wants to get their money. It's all about the Title IV-D money. All right? So I added to the arsenal uh, the judicial intervention for to get your driver's license back. Listen, even if you just get it back for working hours, it's good. You just don't want to go to work, be driving, and you get pulled over one day by some idiot cop or sheriff, and you get locked up because they suspended your license for a fake court order, fake child support order, okay? So you got to get it rolling. All right, listen, enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, rick0327 at me.com. All right, guys.